Verse 17 says, God also bound himself with an oath so that those who received the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. And verse 18 also just has this, drops this kind of theological statement of it, it is impossible for God to lie. Interesting implications to that statement. I know, Jeremy, you've, you've talked before about open theism. I know you're big on that. So I wanted to kind of just let you go off on that. And, and my question was, how can we know God will keep his promise if he has changed his mind in the past? So yeah, we find that in these verses, verses 17 and 18. But so let's look at the argument being made here. Hmm. Essentially in 17, it's, hey, we need to be sure that God won't change you know, on this, which implies that God can change, you know, God's mind, right? So the, right. the fact that we're trying to argue, hey, how do we be sure on this one means that there's a, a presupposition here that God can change God's mind. And so we're starting with that. But then the author says, the reason we can be confident God won't change, you know, God's mind on this one is because God can't lie. So then it adds a second layer of, well, how do we know God won't? Well, because God won't lie and God's already promised it. And so, you know, both those things. So this takes me, uh, when I was thinking about those two arguments, God could change his mind, but God won't, God can't lie, uh, to the story of Hezekiah. This is an Old Testament story. I know you love the Old Testament, Jeff. So I'm going to oh, take yeah. you there on the Old Testament train. Second Kings chapter 20 is where you find this story. I'm going to paraphrase it because it's a whole, it's a whole chunk of this chapter. But uh, if our listeners want to go look this up, Second Kings chapter 20 in the Old Testament. Story of a king named Hezekiah. I read this story and it <laughs> it broke my theology when I was like growing in my faith because I had no box to put this in. Now, Jeff, you referenced, which is another one that pinged me, um, you know, the flood. God says, you know, I regret that I have made humans. And I remember thinking, like, how can God experience regret? That's a very weird thought. Like, and it's not the only example. Uh, when God makes Saul king, you find it in that story too, that I regret that I have made Saul king. Well, how on earth can an, a fully omniscient God, the way I understood it, have any sense of regret if God knew exactly what was going to happen? Then what, what, is, what is the text trying to say? It doesn't make any sense, right? And all this. So that already had some like heartburn over that. Like that doesn't really make sense. But Hezekiah was the one that was like, oh snap, I have no theological room for this. And he, so let me paraphrase the story real quickly. Hezekiah is king. He's old. Uh, and and the, the prophet at the time is, is, is Isaiah, big time prophet, right? Isaiah is told by God, go and tell Hezekiah that he's about to die. He needs to put his house and, and his affairs in order because he will not recover directly from God. Go tell the king, put his affairs in order. He will not recover. So Isaiah does it, goes to the palace, does all this thing, right? And hey, Hezekiah, uh, bad news. God said, you're going to die. Put your house in order. You will not recover. Have a good one. Sorry. Starts to walk out. Hezekiah immediately goes into this like raw emotional moment with God, starts pleading with God, like, I'm not ready to die. You know, all this like starts crying out to God, have this really intense prayer. Before Isaiah even leaves the building, God's like, whoa, hold up, Isaiah. Um, because of what Hezekiah just did, his reaction to what you just said uh, changed what I'm about to do. I want you to go back, tell him I'm going to give him 15 more years. He will recover. And uh, yeah, I heard him. So it's, it's going to be good. So Isaiah's like, okay, <laughs> turns back around. Walks again. Oh yeah. Hey, has a guy. Nothing. I just told you scratch it. God just liked, he really liked what you just did and what you just said. And so as a result, you're not going to die. You got 50 more years. Good job. And I remember reading that story and I'm like, mm, okay, we got a problem here because either God is legit changing his mind and didn't know that God was going to do that. Right? Like God literally thought Hezekiah was about to die. And then God made it, you know, so that Hezekiah was going to have 50 more years and didn't know in advance. Or God lied. And God told Isaiah to say that to get Hezekiah to do something that God knew in advance. Hey, you're not actually going to die. I'm just saying that to you to get you to do this certain reaction. Here's what's crazy. And I rented this when I got ordained because I had an elder group that met with me to, to vet my theology. And our only argument we got in was the story of Hezekiah. 
because I said, yeah, I think God can change God's mind. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, God doesn't do that. And I brought up Hezekiah. I'm like, what about Hezekiah? And the response I got, one elder in particular was really strong on this. Uh, no, God said that to Hezekiah to get Hezekiah to, you know, to have this reaction. So I said, so God intentionally lied, said something that is not true to Hezekiah to get Hezekiah to, wouldn't that be lying and manipulation? Like, so that's your view of God. And, you know, well, no, 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 da, 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 had this whole talk about it. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think it's interesting that here in Hebrews 6, you have God can change and, you know, change God's mind and it's impossible for God to lie, which if you take the story of Hezekiah and then you you use the filters we have in Hebrews 6, you go, okay, I think we have to read that story literally and say, yeah, God did change God's mind and God wasn't lying to Hezekiah and all that. Um, so here's what I would say in, in relation to your question. And again, we can we can riff on this as, as long as you like, because this is this is my favorite non-essential topic of theology. So I, I love open theism. We can go on and on. But most of the time I bore people and they're like, I don't care that much about it. Here's what I would say is my, my answer to your question. How do we know God will keep his promise if he's changed his mind before? That's your question. God's mind can change, but God always looks like Jesus. That's my answer. God's mind can change. So God can say, hey, I was going to do this and now I'm going to do that instead. And you find that all throughout Old Testament and New Testament where God says things like, you know, if you do this, then I will do that. And if you do this, then I will. It's all conditional language, which implies God is saying, I'm going to react to you. If you do this, I'm going to do this. If you do this, I'm going to do that. And that is that is the essence of God, you know, changing what was intended based on what we do, which is why I find Jesus so compelling, why I find God so compelling. If you told me that nothing I could say or do uh, would ever change the mind of God, then we are essentially, you know, either uh, characters in a movie or we are pawns on a chessboard that someone else is moving and we have an illusion of free will, but it is not real. And I just don't find any of that to be what resonates with what I find in scripture. So I think we can be confident. God always looks like Jesus, but God's mind can change. I would agree that that God would have to be able to change his mind because that's the only way that prayer makes sense. Right. Totally. Yes. I think um, the, the comedian George Carlin had, had a bit about this where he talked about God has a plan and everything's going according to plan. And he's saying like, that's why you shouldn't even pray because you can't ask God to change his plan. <laughs> Something well, like that. But what's funny is most Christians believe that. And, right. you know, if, if you ask a typical Christian, why, why should you pray? Uh, it's usually the, the logistical answer as well, because it's an act of obedience. That's why you pray. But mm-hmm. then, you know, they'll say, because prayer changes you. That's why you pray. Because prayer changes you. It doesn't change God. Prayer changes you. Well, tell that to Hezekiah. Because Hezekiah didn't pray like that. It changed you know? him because it made him not die. It made him not die. It changed him because God <laughs> responded. And so he's like, I got 50 more years out of that. No, Hezekiah, it's going to change your heart to accept what God has for you. No, it's not. And yeah. literally, I love when Christians say that. It's like, that's not what the text says. Like, we find this argument in Hebrews 6. So it's not like I'm pulling one random Old Testament. You know, it's like we, we see that throughout God's interaction. And, you know, even in Jesus. And, you know, when Jesus is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, what's the prayer? Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass for me. What do you mean, if it's possible? Shouldn't Jesus know if it's possible? But Jesus seems to be operating under a framework with God, the Father, like, hey, I know there's like maybe a few options here. Uh, is there a different option that we can do? And the answer is like, nope, this on this one, we got to do it this way. It's like, okay. And then Jesus submits. But the prayer is an intriguing, if it's possible, if there's another way, let's figure out another way. Cause I'm not, I'm not really looking forward to this way. And so again, I think it, it totally makes sense of prayer, but it also makes a way, a way more intriguing version of God that I actually want to talk to and want to relate with. And gosh, if I think God would legitimately respond to things that we do, then yeah, prayer matters immensely and what we do matters and what we say matters. And, uh, it just makes life so much more rich. And it's so sad to me 
that Christians are so afraid of that. And they, they try to gloss over and make this, you know, what I think is a very boring boxed in version of God. I guess I, I would say I want to believe in that God, right? It's, it's reminding me of a couple episodes ago when we were talking about the origin of the universe and, and how do you explain it? And, you know, I'll, I'll admit, I, I don't have a smart answer for this, but so if you want to say God, that's fine. It could be like a deism version of God where it's some impersonal being who doesn't talk to us, who doesn't answer prayers. I feel like that would line up with, with the reality I see because I haven't seen like someone miraculously healed. I haven't seen a miracle in my own life. Uh, and, you know, to go back to the, the quadrilateral, that's my, my reason and experience is making me not believe in God right now. Like all it would take is, is an instance where I, I see prayer work in real life. I mean, the, the God of the Bible in the, in the stories I read, it, it totally makes sense to me that, that he changes his mind. So it's not hard to wrap my head around in that sense. Well, Jeff, my daughter is still praying for you every night that uh that you will experience god and I'll, I'll admit there's been a few nights where i've been praying with her and i have forgotten to pray for you i'll, I'll admit that to you and to our listeners wow. and my daughter will not let me finish the prayer <laughs> if i forget you and she'll say dad what about jeff I'll say okay yes i gotta pray for jeff so uh although it would be bad for our podcast i do pray that um that you're gonna experience that and you're gonna see something i think that'd be super cool so Adeline and yeah. I will keep praying. Oh, thank yeah, thank you for that. Thank you to Adeline if you're listening. Uh, that's she does listen. That's she great. Listens, yeah, listens with my wife. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thanks. That's that's great. I mean, you know the this show is great, but but it ain't no eternal salvation, right? So <laughs> you'd be willing to trade it if if you could if you could see that, huh? <laughs> 